everyone and welcome to another lower body mobility class. So in today's session we're going to be working on hip extension as well as knee health. So some of the primary areas we'll be working will be hamstrings, quads and the hip flexor region. Now in terms of what you're going to need in today's class, I would advise two yoga blocks, a tennis ball if you have and also a towel for some of the work that we're going to be doing in a half kneeling position just for a bit of cushioning underneath the knees. So to begin with, what we're gonna start with is spinal cars and lower body cars. The first set of spinal cars with the neck and the rest of the spine, we're going to be in a kneeling position. So you have a couple of options and I want you to explore and work with both options because we're trying to stretch around the knee area, quad region, as well as back of the feet, toes, and front of the ankles and this will prep us for some of the work later to come. So either being in this position on your toes, you can also alternate to having your fleet flat. You'll probably end up finding your experience to stretch underneath your ankles. Now if this is the case, what you can then do if it's a bit too less comforting is get a folded towel and then just place it in the gap here as you sit back. Yoga blocks are also an option. So as we go through the movement, you may find being in this position for a bit of time too discomforting. You can offload some of your body weight onto the yoga blocks as so, adjusting them, leaning forwards as well so you're not sitting as much onto your toes, but also making this more tolerable. So what I ask for guys is as we're going through our neck cars and we're going through the rest of the spine, just try to be in either this position, feet flat, combine the two a little bit, use the blocks if you feel you need to, to adjust your body position, but aim to try and open up, stretch the whole knee region and the feet as well. <clears throat> All right, so beginning with neck cars. Take a position. You're gonna have the arms by the side and pinning the shoulder blades down, making a fist. I then want you to build tension up through the arms into the upper body, abdominals braced, lower body tight, and starting by tucking the chin towards the chest, and then rotate to the side, followed by side bending, extend back, and rotate across. Going back round to the start, and then reverse. Rotate the other way, side bend, extend back, rotating across. And as you're beginning to go through this movement, now begin to find a nice slow, controlled pace. Focus on keeping everything from neck below as still as possible. Maintaining tension throughout the body, aiming to expand every aspect of this movement. So more flexion, more rotation, more side bending, more extending back and rotating across without anywhere from below the neck contributing. And finish up on that rep. Now for the rest of the spine, we're going to cross the arms. From here we'll segmentally flex, so around the back as fast as possible, aim to try and keep the pelvis still, then rotate to the sides, follow that up by side bending segmentally as best as you can, holding onto that extends back segmentally as well, and holding onto as much spinal extension as you can, rotate across. Wrapping myself back around to the start and then changing direction. In this position, it's not as easy to compensate from the lower portion of the body, so the pelvis and the legs, but it is possible. So just be mindful about what is happening with the pelvis. Try to keep the pelvis still, try to keep your legs as still as possible. Try to avoid shifting weight from side to side with the pelvis as you go through the movement. And 
finish up on that rep there. Now for the hips, we're going to get into a sideline position. You can get one yoga block to use as a head support. For me, I'll use my arms in any way for upper body strategy for tension. And then beginning with the top hip, I'm going to bring my knee in towards my chest as best as possible. Then I'm going to lift up towards the ceiling. From here, pause, internally rotate as much as I can. And then send the knee back into hip extension as I continue to internally rotate. Bring the legs to meet each other and then reverse. Lift up, rotate the other way. Bring the knee back out and around. Slowly lowering back to the start. And then I want you to just keep that going, keeping a nice, steady, controlled pace. <clears throat> Begin to take note of how things feel as you're going through the movement. Especially as you send that knee back into hip extension, how does it feel? And then even when you reverse the movement and you're sending the knee back into hip extension, then lifting up and rotating the other way. How does that feel? This is going to be the main focus of today's class. So I want you to make a note of how well you feel you perform hip extension. So from here as you internally rotate and you're sending the knee back, how does all of that feel? Do you notice maybe coupling compensation from other areas of the body? Generally, it'll be the nearby joints. You might feel a bit of pelvic motion. You might notice a bit of spinal movement. We are trying to minimize that with the calves and reduce it. If you do notice that, just make a mental note as well. And finish up on that rep. Switch sides. Okay, so bringing the knee in towards the chest and then lifting up towards the ceiling. From here, internally rotate the hip. Send that knee back, continuing to internally rotate and then reverse. Meanwhile, keeping tension in the rest of the body Still trying to work on expanding this motion, so more hip flexion, more abduction, more internal rotation, more hip extension, but without other areas of the body coming along for the right. So I'm trying to keep my pelvis as still as possible. I'm trying not to get any spinal movement, especially from the lower back portion contributing. And as I'm going through the movement, I'm also registering how things generally feel. Where does it feel maybe a bit more tight, a little bit more restrictive, limited with my movement? How does the hip extension motion feel? Do I feel strong, weak there? Do I have a good mind-muscle connection of what I'm engaging to create that movement? Anything that stands out to you, just make a mental note of. And we will finish up on that rep there. Now for the knees, we're going to get into this position. So left leg is bent, I'm going to hook my left arm underneath this leg and then lift this leg slightly, place this hand over my bicep and then the hand goes above my knee. Now I want to get my rotation coming from my tibia bone, so this shin bone here. So as you go through the movement, pay attention to watching that bone as you create the movement. I will externally rotate the knee, so when I turn the foot out, this is what I want to rotate this bone here. Then I'm going to extend, finishing just shy of a lockout. Turn in, so I internally rotate the knee, and then I close. I'm going to do that one more time, externally rotate. Extend, finishing just shy. Internally rotate, close. Holding that position now, we'll reverse. Extend. 
pause, externally rotate, flex, internally rotate, extend, externally rotate, and flex. Now in this position, we'll go for three to four ankle cars in one direction, and then three to four in the other direction. Now we're just focusing on trying to not let anything above the ankle create this movement. So we're trying to keep our tibia, our shin bone, as still as possible, getting zero knee rotation from ankle movement. And finish up on that rep, and then we'll switch sides. Arm hooks underneath, lift the leg up, hand over the bicep, this hand behind the knee. In this position, externally rotate the knee. Extend finishing just shy of a lockout, internally rotate, flex, externally rotate, extend, internally rotate, and flex. Now holding this to internal rotation, we're going to extend, externally rotate, flex, and one more time, internally rotate, extend, Externally rotate, flex. Good. Now three to four ankle cars, keeping the shin bone as still as possible. And finish up on that rep. Okay, so we are going to begin with hip extension. For this, we are going to need a chair, box, bench, something similar to what I have. A low coffee table works as well. I would advise as well if you have a stick, this will also be quite useful. So to begin with, we are going to place our leg onto the box. Now we're looking for a belly of the hamstring stretch, so this sort of region here. In this position, what I'm going to do is place a slight bend on the knee. Now that slight bend on the knee will generally move the stretch away from feeling it directly behind the kneecap, which is what a lot of people experience, and it will help move that stretch a bit more above the knee, working its way closer towards the belly and even further up. <clears throat> so I have a slight bend. Now, in order to get a hamstring stretch, Generally, you will see people just fall forwards in this position in order to lengthen that hamstring. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, but I want you to try to at least uh, manipulate the hamstring stretch by manipulating pelvic movement. So my pelvis, if I imagine it's like a ball of water, I'm gonna pour water out the front side, lifting up the back. Okay, so I'm anteriorly pelvic tilting. As I anteriorly pelvic tilt, that will lengthen my hamstrings, in this position, I already have a slight hamstring stretch. Then I can explore if I want by falling forwards, and I shouldn't have to fall forwards much more in order to get a good stretch on the hamstrings. Now, there's a few variables you can play with. How much you bend the knee, and also externally rotating the hip, and internally rotating the hip. So turning the knee out, turning the knee in. If I turn the knee out, generally that will give me a bit more of a specific stretch on the side of the hamstrings. Turning it in will work more the inner portion of the hamstrings. <clears throat> with the variables, what I want you to do is just play a little bit with the knee bend, the rotation of the hip, combining that with as well the anteriorly pelvic tilting, and try to scan or navigate a good line of tension. Where do you feel a good amount of a stretch sensation? If it generally feels tight all around, you might want to just go down the middle to begin with. We are going to be performing two rounds of a pails and rails contraction. So the pails contraction is going to be to drive the leg down into the box combined with trying to hamstring curl. So what I'm thinking about doing is pushing my leg down but also dragging my ankle in towards me as if I was trying to close my knee angle. You'll feel that increase the stretch on the posterior side of the leg. And then the opposite, the rails contraction is going to be to try to lift my leg off, which won't happen if I'm in my end range, 
How I'm going to perform that effort is to anteriorly pelvic tilt combined with contracting this whole hip flexor lower abdominal region to try and promote the action of trying to lift the leg off. So you should feel as you contract this region anteriorly tilt more for the rails contraction, you should still feel that you maintain that stretch lengthened hamstring sensation back here. So that's what we're looking for as well. Alright, so you've been holding the stretch for a little while. Lastly, before we begin, you'll notice I have a stick. I use a stick for two reasons, just to help with balance, but also when I'm creating tension to support myself, to allow me to set myself up in a way in which I feel more stable and I can produce more force. So feel free to use a stick if you have, and use it in any fashion that will allow you to accomplish this with more ease and effectiveness. Alright, breath in. Take a good brace, tension the upper body, abdominal region, both legs are tight, and now I warn you with 20%. Drive down for the pales contraction, hamstring curl. So I'm pushing down, I'm curling, trying to close in the angle with 20%. Now I'll ramp that up to 40. Push down, curl. Think push down, curl. Use all of this, try not to lose the pelvic tilting. Take it up to 60. 80. And now I want you to give it your best efforts. Try not to lose that effort. Keep pushing down as hard as you can. Keep curling the knee in as best as you can. 10 more seconds. 5, 4, 3, 2, one, and now rails contraction, so anteriorly tilting more with the pelvis, trying to lift this leg off by contracting hip flexor, quad, lower abdominal region. I'm giving it my best for this contraction. You should still feel a stretch on the posterior hamstring region. Stay with me, 15 more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Now soften, but don't come out of position. See what happens as you soften. For many of us, we'll probably just sink straight into a deeper stretch. If that's not the case for the second round, then try anterior pelt, tilt more with the pelvis. You may feel the stretch has moved a little bit. Play again with internally, externally rotating the hip. Play with that knee bent. All right. Use those variables in combination to try and find either good line of tension or maybe if you found you had a bit of tension in various places for this second round, you may want to change something to target a slightly different area on the hamstring. Before we go into the second round, we're just trying to recover right now. So we're just holding the stretch. It should be tolerable. Working on the breath. Trying to remove any unnecessary tension. Okay, second round now. So, once again, take a good brace, solidify. Pales contraction, driving down, curling into me, begin at 20. Ramp up to 40. 60. 80. Safest and greatest effort, and hold. Keep tension throughout the body. Try not to let that effort drop. Stay with it, 10 more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one and rails, anteriorly tilting more with the pelvis, contracting quad hip flexor, lower abdominal region, doing my best to get this leg to lift off the box. Imagine there's a scale under your ankle, you want that scale to reach zero as best as possible. Give it your best. Stay with it, 10 more seconds. Five. 
five, four, three, two, one. Now soften. And don't come out of the stretch, but try to reestablish the passive stretch again. And once you found that passive stretch, we're just going to spend a little bit of time here in the passive stretch before we come out of position. So a few deep breaths in and out. Try to calm everything down. Ready, slowly come out of position, and then we'll switch legs. So just like before, play with those variables, play with the knee bending, internally, externally rotating the hip. Again, try to figure out for yourself what you need to do to find that line of tension that speaks the best to you. And then once you've found it, we're just going to spend a bit of time hauling the passive stretch before we begin our first round. We want now we're holding this passive stretch to kind of ease into it. So we want the nervous system to be relaxed as best as possible in this position, guys. What that means is that if you find you put yourself into a stretch and it's quite deep and it's very intense and you feel you can't stay in it for that long, then just back out of it a little bit so it doesn't feel as intense of a stretch. Slow breath in. Slow breath out. Use the breath to help calm down the system. And if you do quite well at staying quite relaxed and calm in this position, you may not start to notice as well tension ease off. If that's the case, you may want to build a bit more tension by anteriorly tilting more and stretching the hamstring a little bit more. All right, we'll begin the first round now. So breath in, build tension throughout the body. And payables contraction, 20%. So driving down, curling in. 40. 60. 80. Safest, greatest effort, and halt. with it. Ten more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, and rails contraction. Nothing else in the body changes. Trying to get that scale on any ankle to be zero as best as possible. seconds for five four three two one soften try not to come out of the stretch if you feel you lost it play with those variables again adjust see what you need to do to get a good stretch line attention Slower breath out. Let's try to relax as best as we can before we run into our second round. A few more breaths. Alright, second round. So take a good brace. Solidify and pales, starting at 20, 40, 60, 80, best effort. Best guys, 15 more seconds. For five, four, three, two, one, 
and rails and totally tilting, contracting this front side now to try and keep you in that stretch. Trying to keep those length, the hamstrings under length. Do not lose the pelvic tilting. Stay with it for 10 more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Begin to soften and then sink again slightly deep into the passive stretch. Return back to the breath. Just try and calm the system down before we come out of position. And then when you're ready, slowly come out of position. <clears throat> All right, guys. Now, for the second exercise, this is called a kinetic stretch. So we training what we have just been training. It's a very active movement, both ways. So the movement will look like this. But what is happening is I'm actively pulling myself into this position. So this is the rails contraction, the anterior pelvic tilt combined with quad hip flexor, lower abdominal contraction. And then when I'm reversing the motion, it's a pales contraction, so I'm pushing down, hamstring curling into the box to slowly bring myself back up. You can use a stick for balance again and also to create tension. How this is going to work is we're going to perform two sets. So we'll go left side, right side, left side, right side. Five seconds pulling ourselves in. We, within five seconds, get to the end of our stretch tolerance and then push down slowly come back up. Now with this, one other thing is you want to begin out of your end range of motion. So you shouldn't be feeling a stretch at the start. So I'm starting relatively upright. And it's from here, I begin the anterior tilt. I'll create a little stretch and then I fall with my torso, but I'm still trying to lift this leg off as I simultaneously fall forwards. I work into how much I can tolerate the stretch. I push down as best as I can to come back up. This is an after one with which tension, the more you can create internal tension, the harder this exercise then becomes. We are going to perform five reps with a 10 second hold at the end. I ask that you give it as much effort that if you were to try and perform another rep, it would be very difficult, most likely wouldn't happen because you'd be too fatigued. All right, so setting the leg on the box, slight bend in the knee, Adopt, I would suggest the same sort of setup you had for the pails and rails. Follow my cue with this. So, begin anteriorly tilt, contract this front side and begin to pour yourself in. Five, four, three, two, one. You should be getting to your end. And now, pails, push down, curl. Five, four, three, two, one. Should be getting back to the start and immediately go back to the rails to lower yourself. Five, four, three, two, two, and rails five. Pails five, four, three, two, two. Good. Rails contraction five, four, three, two, three. Pails to push down, five, four, three, two, three. Two more reps, keep it going. Five, four, three, two, four, five, four, three, two, four. And this rep we're gonna hold, five, four, three, two, Five, holding this, contracting, you're still contracting the rails, anteriorly tilting, quad, hip flexor, lower abdominal, to try and hold this as active as possible. Five, four, three, two, one, slowly come back out of it. And then we'll switch sides. <clears throat> so 
place the label in the box, place a slight bend in the knee, begin to create that contraction of anterior pelvic tilting and contracting hip flexor lower abdominal region before we pull ourselves in. So I've got a good brace, good amount of tension, I've contracted that and now I'm lowering for five, four, three, two, one, five, four, three, two, one, five, four, three, two, one, five, four, three, two, two, five, four, three, two, three, five, four, three, two, three, five, four, three, two, four, five, four, three, two, four, and last rep, five, four, three, two, five, hold, maintaining that rails contraction, stay tight guys, for five, four, three, two, one, and then slowly come out of position. Now for our second set, just like we did for the pails and rails, you may want to change something for your second set, especially with the pails and rails. If you work kind of middle of the hamstring and then your second set you change the angle, I would suggest try to reinforce that same position for your second set. Okay, so change something a little bit if you were doing that previously. <clears throat> All right, second round. From here, take a good brace, solidify, begin to anteriorly tilt, contract this front side, and then start the motion, flowing down for five, four, three, two, one, and reverse. Five, four, three, two, one, reverse. Five, four, three, two, two, and reverse, five, four, three, two, two, rep three, five, four, three, two, three, five, four, three, two, four, five, four, three, two, and hold this one. Five, four, three, two, one. Slowly come out of it. And then we'll switch sides. Same thing. Feel free to change a little something with the setup for the second set. <clears throat> Breath in. Solidify and begin. Five, four, three, two, one. Reverse. Five, four, three, two, one. Five, four, three, two, two. Reverse. Five, four, three, two, two. Rep three, five, four, three, two, three, five, four, three, two, three, five, four, three, two, four, five, four, three, two, four, final rep, five, four. Three, two, five, and halt. For five, four, three, two, one. Slowly soften, and then when you're ready, come out of position. Okay. 
Okay. Now our next exercise is going to be a lying down exercise on our back. For this, if you have a tennis ball, it will come quite handy. Now on my back, what I'm going to do is called knee hinges but biased in hip flexion. So what that means is I'm going to bring my knee in towards my chest as best as I can. I don't want to lose this hip flexion position. So as I perform the exercise, there will be a tendency for this knee to slowly want to drop down, especially if my hamstrings are quite tight. Once they get put on the lengthen uh, condition, they'll want to drop down. So you may notice that, which is why this tennis ball will be your friend. So this tennis ball will go right here in between the folds, and then you're going to crush that tennis ball. So you should feel that tennis ball in contact with your body. If you start to lower the knee, that tennis ball will start to roll out of place. So the exercise, I've flexed my hip, my knee is as bent as possible. The other leg, you can have it straight, ideally I would ask for that. If that is hard, then bend the knee slightly into this position. Then it's extending the knee. Okay, I extend the knee as best as I can, I hold for five seconds, and then I slowly flex. I will repeat that. We're going to perform five reps and then that fifth rep we're going to hold in the extended position for 10 seconds. So if you have a tennis ball, place it here. If not, you could also use a folded towel. You could place your hand there as well to give you feedback. Crush the tennis ball by bringing the knee in to the chest as best as you can. Holding that, keeping tension, keeping that hip flexor quad region tight. Begin to extend the knee, when you get to your end, hold 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and flex. Extend, 5, 4, 3, 2, 2, and flex. Extend, 5, 4, 3, 2, 3, and flex, extend, five, four, three, two, four, final rep, flex, and extend, and we're gonna hold for 10 seconds, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, slowly, Softer and relax. Switching sides. Flex the hip, crush the tennis ball. Take a good brace and begin. Extend the knee. Five, four, three, two, one, and flex. Extend. Five, four, Three, two, two, and flex, and then extend. Five, four, three, two, three, flex, extend. Five, four, three, two, four, flex, and final rep. Extend, five, four, three, two, five, holding for another five seconds, five, four, three, two, one, slowly flex and relax. We will finish up with today's class. Thank you very much. Hope you guys found the content useful. Uh, feel free to leave a comment, any questions you may have, and I'll get back to you. Thank you very much.